I want to thank you, Acting Secretary Little, for being here today with your team. It's very nice to meet you. And in preparation for today's hearing, had the opportunity to peruse your website. And I understand that your department has a contract with an organization called Recidivis. Yes. Can you share with us what Recidivis is? and what the purpose was for awarding this contract. So originally, uh, the contract with Recidivis uh, grew out of an agreement that we had with the Council of State Governments uh, to improve uh, community supervision practices, uh, to have better outcomes on reentry, and enhance uh, the use of data-based uh, approaches to, to management. Um, and there are really a couple things that Recidivis uh, has done with us. Uh, one is working to provide a, uh, or support the development of a dashboard of data that could be used from everyone from the secretary down to the field agent. So we'd all be looking at the same metrics around uh, who was coming back uh, from the community, uh, what sort of measures that we might be using to manage um, our reentrant population more effectively, keeping them in the community, and for those who did, uh, in fact, come back to the institutions, um, that we uh, essentially were using all the tools at our disposal. So it really laid the data bare. So that was one piece of it. Um, we, however, also enlisted their uh, services uh, to um, do a cultural assessment on the parole side. Uh, to look at uh, the acceptance of some of the new uh, supervision techniques that we had put into place, uh, to also get a gauge of how effectively we were interacting with our staff. We just heard a discussion around pay, whether or not uh, our staff were buying in, but also frankly felt like they were being supported on career advancement, because we understand morale uh, is very important for performance. Uh, so they did do that work for us, uh, not only statewide, but in different parts of the state. So there were really two aspects of the work that they were doing. Uh, we're in the process of winding down the uh, dashboard work. Of course, the cultural assessment is done. Uh, and the dashboard work hopefully will go into a maintenance role here very shortly. Was the contract with Recidivis let under a competitive bidding process? The uh, original uh, payment was uh, through a grant that was received through uh, in conjunction with the Council of State Government. And as part of that agreement with the Council of State Governments and recidivists, uh, they were to present to us a, uh, a proposal um, around uh, the department's commitment to carry that on two years forward. So again, it was done, as I understand it, uh, through our agreement with the Council of State Governments. And because it was done under the grant, it was not uh, that particular engagement, because it really came from CSG, um, was not subject to uh, a competitive bidding. So where are we in that process? So it was uh, the first year was with a grant. First, first. So we're still years. in the first year. So um, there is no existing contract per se, um, or you're in the process of bidding this out and you are going to go through a competitive process to then approve that contract moving forward. As I understand how the grant was awarded, and, and I was not in this role at that time, but okay. it's, it's my understanding as when the contract was awarded, one of the provisions is that the Commonwealth would agree to carry the work forward. So in return for CSG, essentially they were the contracting entity, and they entered into the uh, agreement with recidivists but that we would uh, uh, simply, uh, essentially assume that agreement going forward. And so we've, we've requested a proposal from recidivists as to what that scope of work would be. And, and it is our intent to maintain the work that they've already done if, if, in fact, we were to continue this relationship. So you're not going to competitively bid the contract to continue to do that work. You're, you're just going to let that um, whatever they present to you, or is this something that um, they've done the work and you can assume it through existing department resources moving forward? They've done, they've done work. It's my understanding that the original agreement contemplated that uh, we would pick up a, a large part of it, because we actually do, the data is our data. It's not like they're creating the data. 
and but there's still somebody has to maintain it so what what is at issue now is the maintenance of the work that's already been done to this point and um, that currently is not uh, work that we can do under our IT department uh, without some uh, adjustments so we're at the, at the point now figuring out who's going to maintain it and uh, per the original agreement with CSG well I was a little puzzled um, because You've brought in an outside firm uh, to extract data, which my understanding has presumably been collected by and is residing in the department's very capable Bureau of Planning, Research, and Statistics. Correct. So you're paying a third party entity to repackage that data. Um, but this entity is not collecting it. You already are collecting it. So you're, you're already doing that work. So you're paying a third party entity to repackage the data. It sounds like they've done a few other things for you. So um, I'm, I'm still a little perplexed as to um, why we're doing this, what the cost for this is, um, and now to learn that they're is no contract, but we're expending resources, it's troubling. Well, there is a contract, and that it is the original contract that was developed under the grant with CSG. We're at the point now where the uh, assumption of the work, of, of maintaining the work that's been done, so they actually did more than just repackage the data, it actually was the creation of a, dash, a dashboard, which in and of itself is, if you will, an application. Um, which allows for the uh, depiction of the data at multiple levels. So that's, it's more than just repackaging the data and producing a report. Uh, it's simply a matter of who's going to maintain this going forward. Very good. Uh, is that contract available on the Treasury's uh, transparency portal? I would imagine there's any grant contract might be, um, and we can Very certainly good. pin down exactly where that is. <laughs> And lastly, did you consult with the Office of Administration and the Chief Information Officer of the Commonwealth prior to engaging with these, um, this contract? I, w I would think that uh, the, with, in terms of the grant agreement, whatever procedures were in place, we had to go through that before we could execute the agreement with the that, Council of State That doesn't Governments. answer the question. Did you confer with the Office of Administration and the Commonwealth's Chief Information Officer, the, the tech expert in our state government prior to executing this contract. Senator, to answer your question directly, not having been around, I will have to verify that. I would appreciate you getting back to us on that. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And then um, turning to another issue, I spoke with your predecessor at great length about uh, the Commonwealth's efforts to protect uh, women who have been incarcerated from becoming victims of human trafficking uh, when they are released. Can you give us a, a status update on the work being done to prevent uh, inmates from becoming future human trafficking victims? Uh, yes, Senator. Uh, so we're really proceeding on several uh, fronts in that regard. Uh, one is actually working with the uh, inmate population themselves to educate them uh, of some of the risks that they may be presented with or actually may be presented with while they're in their term of incarceration as, as uh, research has shown that some of the grooming actually may occur while a lady may be in, in residence with us. Uh, so part of it is through the programming that we provide at Muncie and Cambridge Springs as it relates to that. Uh, we also have work through our Bureau of Investigations and Intelligence uh, uh, as it relates to any information that may be out there uh, that we need to react to in terms of uh, potential traffickers or known traffickers and that sort of thing. And then last but certainly not least, uh, in our uh, uh, relationships with other law enforcement agencies, sharing information that we may receive so that that can be pursued for purposes of investigation and where appropriate prosecution. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.